Just about everybody joined us is going to. Uh, really hearty welcome to everybody here. Thank you very much for taking us to the day. Um, we would like to welcome you on behalf of the Black and Local History Society and Government of Farms um, to this meeting session. Colonel Barnhart from the American Air Force in Britain, who's uh, come all the way across to, uh, <laughs> to join us on this occasion. Um, and I'd also like to mention, uh, particularly, uh, a gentleman in the audience here, um, Brian Durbin in the front row there, who was here um, 80 years ago. He was a pupil at Black at Public School. Um, and saw the plane coming across the lake um, before it crashed. Um, I'd also like to make mention of the... Um, we are filming this occasion and they will be able to do it and, and see what we're doing to honour their partners. Um, so it's really nice to be able to share this occasion with them. Briefly, just to outline what happened that day. So we're talking 80 years to the day, three months before D-Day, 1944. A brand new American four-engine bomber, a B-24, flown across the Atlantic from Miami, across by Bermuda to Marrakesh, um, with the intention of flying to the UK. The plan was for the plane to fly up to RAF Valley in Anglesey, um, but bad weather meant they changed their plan and tried to head southwards down to St Morgan in Cornwall. They got lost. Um, they found uh, Filton here in Jordan, north of Bristol. So Filton they lit the flare path for the plane to try and land. Um, they did a, they aborted their run there and came circling round to make another attempt. They came across the lake and as Brian saw, um, came across the lake and clipped the trees in this field. left and the debris spread across properly to where you were all standing sitting. particularly it is fairly well known and so it's really nice on this 80th anniversary to be able at last um, to actually mark um, the occasion. To help us do that I'd like to hand over to the Reverend Katrina Dykes who leading us into a short service. remember those who were killed in that terrible crash here on this hill 80 years ago. I think it's appropriate we pause and perhaps engage our imaginations what the scene might have looked like just here 
on the land beneath our feet today. Sounds and smells, people gathering to manage the situation, people coming to collect the debris, to treat the injured, to take away those who had died. thanks for those who had the vision and drive to pursue this memorial and install it here in this place. We come to remember those who lost their lives, those who came to rescue the survivors and secure the site. And we ask God's blessing for this place that all who pass this way may pause here, remember and reflect the cost of war so much more than on a battlefield as we've heard of accidents and tragedies that happen alongside it. We may, as we stand here today, want to call to mind places of conflict today and all who work and give their lives for peace. Let us pray. which occurred on this hill 80 years ago. We remember those who lost their lives, those who carried the memory of it with them for the rest of their lives. And we remember the families who were never the same again. <laughs> Amen. now to come and bring us a reading from the Old Testament book of Micah. The reading is taken from Micah chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. In the days to come, the mountain where the temple stands will be the highest one of all, towering above all the hills. Many nations will come streaming to it, and their people will let us go up the hill of the Lord to the temple of Israel's God. He will teach us what he wants us to do. We will walk in the paths he has chosen. For the Lord's teaching comes from Jerusalem. From Zion he speaks to his people. He will settle disputes among the nations, among the great powers near and far. They will hammer their swords into ploughs and their spears into pruning knives. Nations will never again go to war, never prepare for battle again. Everyone will live in peace among their own vineyards and fig trees, and no one will make them afraid. The Lord Almighty has promised this. And this is the word of the Lord. are disfigured by war and we pray for ourselves so often unwise stewards of the powers of the universe transfigure the lives and cities scarred by conflict restore hope renew faith revive love and reveal your glory in the world Stir our hearts to compassion and our lives to action to advance your sovereign purpose of peace. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen visit this place O lord we pray and drive far from it the snares of the enemy may your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace and may your blessing be always upon us through jesus christ our lord amen, amen. good afternoon my name is lieutenant colonel nathan barnard i'm with the united states air force I speak English, but it's a little different than your English, so I apologize in advance. Uh, it's an honor to represent the United States Air Force, the 501st Combat Support Wing, and be down here today. I'm a B-52 bomber aviator by trade, so I thought it was actually pretty apropos to be here and get to actually do this for the fellow bomber brethren 80 years ago today. When I started thinking about this, I started wondering, why is it significant? Why 80 years later do we care? Why is there a historical society that cares? I think you can look around the world today and we've got tumultuous times. There's always gonna be bad people. And we need to remember that even in the worst times, there are good people that stand up for what's right. And they're willing to give their lives and raise their hand and say, I will go. I will protect the sheep. I will strike down evil. And even though the aircrew didn't make it to their final mission, this completely awesome symbology which says, I will stand up and I will fight. And we should never ever forget that, ever. And so to be able to unveil this plaque, it's such a, an amazing honor. So thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I think this is just an incredible thing. So that's all I need to say. Let us remember and let's do some unveiling, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right, hold on. Come on around. remembrance with a familiar short two minute silence so let us remember the crew of the B-42J Liberator Bomber 42 110039 who lost their lives on this hill 80 years ago we honour their courage and cherish their memory. We remember 2nd Lieutenant Russell Major, pilot. 2nd Lieutenant Richard Herring, co-pilot. 2nd Lieutenant Kerr Kowalski, navigator. Private William Baker, engineer. Private Robert Watkins, radio operator. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun. <laughs> <laughs>
among the nations, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. Amen. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. On behalf of Blackton Local History Society, um, particularly Ken Parsons, John Ryan, a lot of work in making this day happen along with our huge gratitude to the farms and uh, Tim Lee who's here somewhere I know and all his staff who put up the marquees, uh, arranged all the chippings, done such a lot uh, to make this happen. We were so else who has made this happen on a really mended day, isn't it? <laughs> You're all brave for real weather. Um, I, have I forgotten anybody at all? I'm not sure. If I have, forgive me. But uh, thank you for coming and uh, we appreciate your wanting to be here on this really good occasion for us. Thank you. Do feel free to come and have a look at the park. <laughs>